Hello. I've been asked uh, to, to look at the way in which um, the word Protestant is used and to explain what I mean when I say that I'm not a Protestant. Now, clearly that's, uh, again, it's one of these touchy subjects. It's a subject that can upset and um, confuse my intent, is, my intent is therefore to be clear, but by no means to upset anyone. Um, I think I'd like to say from the outset that while I am not a Protestant, that doesn't necessarily mean that I think less of people who are happy to call themselves Protestant. Indeed, uh, I do count, I do count among my friends many people who would say that. Um... I always go by the maxim that if someone calls themselves a Christian, then I believe them until they show me very clear evidence that they're not. Um, and that's why if someone says that they're a Protestant. That I, I know that they're a Protestant for very good reasons, that they've thought through, their, thought through this and that they are convinced by the Protestant uh, worldview. That's what I mean. And I honour that conviction, and I honour their their integrity in holding to that. However, it's not my understanding of Christianity, and I have to say that too. If I don't believe that I'm a Protestant, I mean, there must be a way round it. There are two little issues. Protestant is not a very fair term because usually what it's used for is to separate and push away um, it's particularly used by uh, certain Christians who would say that um, Protestant means not Roman Catholic and therefore lumps everyone in into the same category and you can see there's actually a logical problem with that. Um, we all know what a cat is, but what is a not cat? Well, Paris is not a cat. Uh, a slice of pizza is not a cat. And a staircase is not a cat. So they are all not cats. And we sort of get the idea that, actually, that's, that, that's a bit of a problem with that, because, well, cats meow, but human beings can go meow as well. Um, cats have teeth, and humans have teeth. Cats can climb, and squirrels can climb. So there are aspects of cats that that go through into not cats. So we need to lump everything together into one thing, which is a not cat, is it, it makes for incoherence. It makes for confusion. It makes for a lack of understanding. And so to call someone a Protestant, meaning not a Roman Catholic, well, then you're in for a bit of a, a bit of a trouble. Because, as the Orthodox, well, they're not Protestant, technically, because they sort of predate the Reformation. And, well, what about the Anglican Catholic Church? Well, we don't regard ourselves particularly being Protestant. And we have to say why. And I think this is the key. We share a lot of things with the Roman Catholic Church, actually. Um, we believe in the communion of saints, we believe in the intercession of saints, uh, we believe in the uh, real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, the objective real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, and some of us would go as far, so far as to say that's transubstantiation. Um, likewise, uh, 
Anglican Catholics subscribe to seven ecumenical councils. So we share a great deal with Roman Catholics. We even recognise that the, the Bishop of Rome, while not having a, a, a status of a monarch, has a very venerable status within Christendom, and that's written into the ecumenical councils. So we can't just dismiss what, what, what's said by the Pope. We have to think about it. And clearly there are things that we don't agree with. Um, we don't believe that uh, the, doc the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception is necessary for salvation. We don't believe that um, the doc doctrine of the Assumption of Our Lady is necessary for salvation. But then again, we don't necessarily believe that uh, uh, the idea of original sin is that everyone is born a sinner. We don't necessarily believe that either. So, you, you see that there is, there is um, a problem. There, is, there are things we share, there are things we differ with. Now, my discomfort with Protestant comes from the fact that it does lump together Christians who believe very different things. It lumps together Lutherans and Calvinists. It lumps together Armenians, Armenians, sorry, and um, Pentecostals and Charismatics. It puts them all together as if they were one homogeneous blob of, Christ, of Christian non-Roman non Catholics. And I don't think that's very respectful for them. If there is a big divide in between what, what is Lutheranism and what is Calvinism, if, there's that big, if there is a divide there, and there is, then it's important that while there are, again there will be things in common, to lump them together and to say, well, we don't need to consider that they, they are just Protestants. I've read so much in Catholic and Orthodox literature which does just that, lumps everyone together. Now, I, of course, I regard the, the Anglican Catholic Church as being historically Protestant. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that we split from Rome in the, at the Reformation. We walked with the Anglican Church, we walked with the Church of England, and that means that we decided to break with Rome. And that means we allied, allied ourselves with um, uh, the Catholic, um, sorry, with the um, Calvinist and Lutheran elements within Anglicanism in the in the uh, 16th century. But we've not continued in the Protestant path. We're not doctrinal Protestants. We don't confess officially to uh, justification by faith alone, for example. It's not there in the, uh, in the affirmation of St. Louis. Nor do we, um, while we believe that Scripture has the uh, highest authority, we do not believe that it's the only authority. because we believe in the tradition of the Fathers as well. And so that would contradict two of the, the, the famous five solas, um, sola fide, justification by faith alone, and sola um, scriptura, that scripture has the sole place of authority. Now, of course, you can argue with that. You can argue with our position. But um, I don't think that would be very fruitful. I'm merely stating what is. But notice also we don't actually disallow that. If we've got people within us 
within our church who do believe in justification of faith by faith alone and do who believe that Scripture is, a, is the highest authority, is the, the only authority, then that's their decision. That's okay. But it's not the official position of the ACC. The ACC is not Calvinist. It's not Lutheran either. Though we don't... Uh, we don't look down on either of them. We, we regard very much the sort of uh, sister churches somewhere along the way. But it's it's more about showing the church that we exist, sharing so much with the churches of tradition. We have continuity with the early church. And that's really why I don't like to be called Protestant, um, because I think it's, it, it does too much of a disrespect for so many expressions of Christianity. I hope that sort of given us an explanation as to, to, to where I'm coming from here and why I believe this. And I hope that you can sort of see that Really, what we need to do is we need to be clear about things so that we don't dismiss each other out of hand, that we actually talk to each other and engage and understand both our similarities and our differences and work therefrom so that we don't get bogged down into um, label-making, which only really results in name-calling, which is a, a, a great shame. So, God bless you. God bless you if you, you regard yourself as Protestant. God bless you, and may he draw you ever closer into that wonderful kingdom of his through your understanding of Holy Scripture. God bless you if you are not a Protestant, that the richness of the tradition may also draw you into, into Christ, and that you may see him at work in your life. And God bless you if whatever you are, that you may find the light of Christ shining in your life now and for eternity. God bless you. And please pray for me.